I'm Philip Thornton, and I'd like to welcome you to the teaching ministry of Legacy Faith Church. With ears to hear and eyes to see, it's now time for you to feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. Now let's get into the word together. You know, when we came into 5783 at Rosh Hashanah of 20, uh, coming into um, last fall and coming into now, it's what, what is 2023, according to the Greco-Roman calendar, the Lord spoke to me, the year of restoration and recompense. The year of restoration and recompense. A year where you will begin to see and experience restoration in a magnificent way. Not just restoring your health, restoring your youth, restoring the things that have been taken from you, but also to restore relationships, family, to bring together again things that have been fragmented and broken. And at the same time, it'll be a time of recompense. I'm going to pay your enemies in full. Recompense to your enemies, right? The Bible says that God's reward is with him and his work is before him. And I've taught entire messages on that. But I say that with um, great pride as well as testimony, right? That this morning, stand up. That's my son. Praise the Lord. And uh, you, you can sit down. That's Aaron. And uh, he's from Georgia. And we have pretty much been estranged most of our lives. And, uh, and not, not to go into details or whatever. But I, told, I spent time yesterday, we, or, or Friday, I took him to New York with me. I had to preach in New York City on Saturday morning. And I took him to New York. And, and, uh, and yesterday morning during the meetings in New York, um, he has a little God encounter, praise the Lord, which opened up a conversation on the way back. And I told him, I said, Aaron, I said, there's never been a moment that I have not prayed and there have been times, and I'm saying this to encourage some of you that are out there, those times that you prayed and you know that you touched the hem of his garment. You know that you touched heaven. You know that God heard you at that moment, and yet you've not yet seen the fulfillment of it. Don't give up. God is a God who restores and recovers all. Glory to God. So I don't care how far gone they might look or where they're at or whether or not you have contact. And we've, we've been in contact some throughout the years, but we've pretty much been estranged. And I'm just honored that he's here today. And to walk in the sanctuary and see him up here just worshiping God, it's like, oh God, I don't know if I can get through today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Because what, what greater joy can a parent have than to know their children are walking with God that know that they're children. And so I want to just pray this right now before we get into the word of God, but I want you to just set yourselves and your hearts in agreement. Glory to God, and I'm going to pray that every one of you that has a child that's not yet walking in what God has for their life, that they're going to find the destiny that God has chosen for them in this season. It's not going to be a long time. Praise the Lord. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I speak and decree and loose the supernatural power of your grace upon the lives of every one of these people. Lord, they are marked for your glory. Their children and their children's children. Everyone that has walked, that has turned aside, everyone, God, that has been seduced or deceived, everyone, God, 
that is currently walking as children of disobedience and estranged from the commonwealth of the word of God, the commonwealth of the nation of God, we command now in Jesus' name a turning in the hearts, a turning in the land, and we speak and decree, Father God, that they are marked with your blood. We command and decree by the authority of the name of Jesus. Every mind-blinding spirit of unbelief, take your hands off of them. We command every spirit of, and every work of darkness that has come to destroy, seduce, and deceive any one of these family members. You are bound by the authority of the name of Jesus. Your power is broken from off of their lives. And by the authority of God's word, I prophesy to every one of their spirits, their inner man, a hunger and a thirst for righteousness where they will know the things of God. They will desire the ways of the spirit and they will walk freely out of darkness and into the marvelous light. God, I loose it, I declare it, and I decree it. And I thank you, Father, that it's in this season, in this now moment, that it will occur. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on and give him praise. All right. Well, praise the Lord. I made it through that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I'm only human. No, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My humanity is not an excuse to fail. My humanity is all God needs to give me success. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, I want you to say that tonight, this morning about yourself. My humanity is not a reason that I should fail. It's the only reason that God needs to give me success. Glory to God. God clothed his word in human flesh. And he clothed his word, he clothed his word with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, all right, if you have your Bibles, go with me quickly. Hallelujah to 1 Peter. I think that's where I want to go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, let me just double check this. Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 4. Glory to God. 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to pick up where we left off. And then I'm going to talk to you today about your helper. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about this person called the Holy Ghost. We'll talk to you a little bit today about how the Holy Ghost is much more than a helping hand. Much more than one that will walk you through a difficult time. We'll talk to you about the dimensions that God has made available to you. I want you to understand that God, by the Holy Ghost, does not want you to live with any limitations in your life. He wants to teach you how, by the Spirit, to take the limits off. That is the application. That is our responsibility. It's not God's responsibility to remove the limits. God has already removed the limits. He has already made unlimited, given you unlimited access and made unlimited power. Now, the thing that we have to grasp and the thing that we have to overcome is when we say unlimited, how big is our unlimited? When we say unlimited, how big is our God? When we say something has been made unlimited, do we really understand what unlimited really means? So as a believer, one of the things that happens, and this is why we continue to grow, we continue to increase in the knowledge of God, because the more you experience God, the more you will discover how unlimited you really are. Because see, there is no limitations in God. He is, always will be, the king of the universe. He is the king of the universe. He's the creator of all things. He's the all-powerful, all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent. He is God. There is none like him. There is no limitations with him, in him, by him, from him, or through him. 
in everything that God did through Jesus Christ coming to the earth was to bring you back to a place where you could live a life without limitations. And I'm going to show you this here in the Word in just a minute as we talk about the Holy Spirit, but I want I want you to just go with me for just a minute and let yourself think about, let yourself dream about what it would be to live an unlimited life. Now, I'm not talking about unlimited and, 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 and living in the biggest houses and driving the fastest cars. Those are nothing to God. He can give you all of that. That don't mean anything to God. And so, don't, so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about living a place of unlimited ability with power over the world and the world system, the elements that are in the world, sickness, disease, infirmity, poverty, fear, anxiety, when many are consumed and, and overcome by those elements that exist within the world. Do you know that fear is an element? may not be a physical element, but it's a spiritual element. Did you know that anxiety is an element, right? Did you know that sickness and disease are elemental in their makeup. It's when something goes awry or astray that something that is has has an elemental structure. When I mean it's it has a structure that's to it. That's why doctors can find it. That's why when they run tests, they can see that these elements exist. But the Bible gives you power over elements. What manner of man is this, as they said to Jesus, that even the wind and the sea, the elements, obey him? What manner of man is this, that when he speaks to the blind eyes, blind eyes open? What manner of man is this, that he raises the dead and heals the sick and cleanses the lepers? What manner of man is this, that he even forgives sins? People, the unlimited power of God that's available to us is where we must begin to move as believers, especially in the days ahead. Because in the days ahead, it's going to be very, very, very important for you, number one, to know your God, and then number two, know how to live and walk in faith. As a born-again believer, many, 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 many believers have never really grown in the knowledge of God's word and in faith. And this is why we are here. This isn't to, to criticize. This isn't to, to speak or put kind of shame or doubt on somebody. This is only here to say, now is the hour, like at no other time in the history of mankind, that we, as the people of God, need to get the element of God's word into our heart because the element of God's word, the substance of God's word, is the substance of every created thing. Your Bible teaches you that. Your Bible teaches you that everything that was made was made by the word of God. That there was not anything that was made that was not made by his word. All things were made by him, for him, and through him. Every substance that physically exists is held together by the word of God. Even to the degree that the book of Hebrews says even the ages and times are framed by the word of God. In the service I taught yesterday morning up in New York, one of the things that I brought to the people, something that you hear frequently here is, remember, you were chosen for this time. But this time was also chosen for you. God framed the time that you live, your time on planet Earth. Your time is in his hands. And so as a believer, you don't have to worry about what time you live in. And you don't have to wish you lived at a different time. God already knows your time. He chose this time for you. And he chose you for this time. And now God wants you as an individual to begin to learn how to manipulate, don't get that word bad, don't, don't let that mess with your head, but manipulate the circumstances and situations that are in the earth by you using your faith on purpose. If you have authority and power over the element of God's word and you have power and authority over the elements that are in the world, then you begin to move in a position, in a dimension 
of unlimited power. This is why when you lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. This is why when you pray for somebody, right, that God's word entering into them, the substance of God's word falling upon their ears, creating faith in them, and instantly miracles begin to happen. This is how it works, ladies and gentlemen. It's not magic. It's not superstitious. It's not, it's not spooky spiritual. It's the way of God's kingdom. And the more I've walked with God and the more I've learned to know him, the more I recognize that this is and was and will always be God's plan for mankind. I'll never forget the moment where all of a sudden I recognized and I saw that what God said to Adam in the garden is what God said to Philip Thornton in eternity. In other words, God's plan for mankind did not change just because sin happened. Sin, right, only put in the earth a law of sin and death that has to be overcome. But the same way that man was to walk with God before sin is the same way that God is to walk with man once sin has occurred and after sin and death will ultimately be defeated. And what is that? As a man or a woman of God, I have ordained you. I have given you dominion over all the works of my hands. My word to you is to be fruitful and to multiply, to replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Glory to God. And throughout all eternity, guess what you're going to be doing? Contrary to popular belief, you're not going to escape planet Earth and go up to heaven and sit down on the cloud in a mansion with somebody feeding you grapes and, and waving palm leaves over you. No, when you get to heaven, when you get into eternity, guess what? God is going to now say, now it's time for you to understand what I meant while you were there. Praise the Lord. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. So you might as well start learning now. Hallelujah. Because why would you want to wait till then if you can do it now? Why would you want to wait till I get to heaven to try to learn this stuff when God's already given you his word so that while you are on the earth and the earth is filled with all kinds of suffering and sickness and disease and poverty and lack and fear and anxiety. Remember, all of those are only elements, right? Filled with elements that are contrary to the word of God because those elements came into being by the perversion of God's word through sin and thus those elements emerged in the earth and are governed by the law of sin and death. But Jesus Christ came and he says what? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes you free from the law of sin and death. But the one who's going to be made free is not every man, just the man who believes. So if we're going to move into a place where we are loosing and unlocking the potential of who we are in our humanity, we begin to recognize that all things are possible for sure. And we know with God all things are possible. But for the believer, it's only all things are possible for those who believe. So all things aren't possible for everybody, but all things are possible for you as you build faith, as you come to a place of recognizing and understanding. Now, I understand and I realize as I, I look around the room, we have a long way to go. We have a lot to grow in, but that's no reason not to keep going. That's no reason to go, well, I just, I don't know if I ever get there. Well, praise the Lord, one step in front of the other. Go forward, right? We're not going to be marking time, running in place. We're going to go forward. We're going to move. We're going to continue to grow. And so it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where on the journey you are, if you just started or if you're light years ahead of me or light years behind me. None of that matters. What matters is that we are in the will of God for our generation. So First Peter chapter 4, glory to God. You thought I forgot, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see where I want to go. Hallelujah. Where did it say? 
There it is. Verse 10 and following. Leave off where we pick up where we left off last week. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one towards another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So last week I began to talk to you about the manifold grace of God. I began to talk to you about how the power, the anointing, the giftings, the call of God was many faceted. That this is how God is going to help each and every one of you in all of the areas of your life. If you're familiar with Romans chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible tells us this. It says, when you don't know what to pray for as you ought, the Holy Spirit himself will take hold together with you and help you in your weaknesses. He will help you in your weaknesses, or listen to these words, that word weakness in the Greek is limitations. In other words, as a believer, the Holy Spirit wants to help you where you have perceived limitations, and how does he do it? He helps you. The word help is the same word as grace here. He charismatically moves upon you with gifting, understanding, wisdom, and revelation so that in life you are able to be positioned in the best place possible to meet who you need to meet, to walk where you need to walk, to receive what you need to receive, and to have power where you need to have power. So the point that I want to make this morning is, as we talk about being stewards of the manifold grace of God, that we are recognizing that as I have said in several of the services in the past, that as we come boldly to the throne of God's grace, as we come boldly to the king of the universe, to the throne, to the altar which is in heaven, whereby we make a legal exchange and give legal access to our lives for the spirit of God and for the substances of God to enter into our lives so that we can use the substance of God's word, the substance of creation to manipulate anything that exists in our created realm. Now understand this. You see, because... When we hear words like manipulate, we go, yeah, I know somebody's a manipulator and I didn't like them. I'm not talking about that kind of manipulation, right? I'm not talking about negative manipulation. I'm talking about the power to change. I'm talking about the power of God working through a life of a believer to now believe God's word. And because as a human being, as a spirit who, who operates, who knows God, who walks with God, as an individual who knows what it means to come to the throne of God's grace to obtain grace and help or to obtain grace and the removal of limitations from your life, to obtain the gift, to obtain the word of God that's sufficient for you to now, in whatever circumstance is facing you, to manipulate that by the word of God. Okay. Those of you who know me, you know that Jan uh, or April of 2016, I was diagnosed with stage four head and neck cancer, had a tumor that developed in my tonsil, in my neck, showed up almost as a gorder, grew to 12 centimeters over a short amount of time. According to the natural, according to what the world said, according to what the doctor said, it was there. It was a substance. It existed, right? There was evidence that there was a tumor in my neck and in my head and in my tonsils that was about to take me out, threatening to rob me of my voice, threatening to rob me of my handsome good looks and charm. <laughs> Praise God. Thank, thank you, Chad. Praise the Lord. I was, I was looking for the response from somebody other than a man, but praise the Lord. <laughs> Mm 
Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hushers, I need some help. <laughs> but, so there was a substance that had attacked my physical body. Come against me. Not only was it attacking my physical body, but it was coming to rob me of my destiny. It was coming to cut me short of the inheritance that God had chosen for me, my family, my children, my grandchildren. It had come against me as an assignment of hell to destroy me. Okay? So what do you do? Well, the substance is evident. There's evidence that it's there. You've got, you're going to have to do something about this. Well, what I want you to understand is, is regardless, and I want you to hear this without condemnation or guilt, because as a believer, right, my number one, my number one reaction is, is we're going to fight this thing, glory to God, with everything that I have within me. We're going to get the word of God out and bless God. I did, and trusting God and, and trusting God. But I did go through procedures. I went through, I didn't go through surgery. I went through chemo and radiation. Worst thing that ever happened, right? Thing, thing, and, and, and I only say that to say that as a believer, I'm not opposed to letting doctors do what doctors can do. But at the end of the day, all healing is still from heaven. And every, every testimony of victory and overcoming still comes from God. So I don't want anybody to ever get under that guilt or condemnation to where I, well, I felt like I need, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that because at the end of the day, what prevailed was the word of God. Because every time that I went back to the doctor after the whole horrible year of chemo and, 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 and radiation, every time I would go back to the doctor, they would advance a report to me that would tell me, well, you're doing pretty good, but this is what you can expect. And I'd tell them, no, that's not what I can expect. What I can expect is I will recover all. No, I understand what you say, and that may be the testimony of 99.9% .9 of the people that have gone through what I went through, but it will not be my testimony. Why? Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. They Listen, you see this rag? You see how much I... I they told me my salivary glands would die. I'd never spit again. <laughs> Glory to God. Boy, were they wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm thinking, well, Lord, you could, you could turn it down a little bit. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Put myself out there. But, but so, so, so now, so next time you think it's gross that pastor's up there on there, just Think about where I came from. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And thank God. Amen. Anyhow. But what, what, what I want you to understand is, is that it wasn't the hand of the doctors. It wasn't the radiation. It wasn't the chemo. It was the substance of faith attacking the elements that exist within this world, cancer or whatever name that can be named. Do you remember that the Bible tells you that Jesus has obtained a name that's higher than some names, a few names, a couple of names, every name that can be named? So if it's something that has a name that has a substance with a name, then bless God, his name is still above that, and you have the authority to begin to go after whatever that is. At the same time, and I want to, I want to shift into where I, I want to go this morning, but the fact of the matter is, is that as a believer, this is where now you need to begin to gain understanding of how powerful this word is. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not up here preaching trying to give you and inspire faith in you just to make you feel good about yourself. I'm trying to put weapons in your hand. I'm trying to teach you as a believer how as a man and a woman in the earth, you can overcome and destroy the works of darkness. How as a human being, it is not your humanity that is limited. It's your faith. And so your humanity, in order to take the limits off, has to begin to grow in faith. That's why the Bible tells you grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. So as a believer, what we're after is now recognizing again the manifold grace of God, what this grace has come to do. And, um, you know, we, we've been around, I've been around, and I, and I watched the last wind of doctrine that blew through the body of Christ in the last 10 years. And in that wind of doctrine, there was a doctrine of grace that came that was weak. It had some truth to it, and that's why so many people followed it, but it was weak. It was what we would term greasy grace, right? It was grace for salvation, but no other grace. And there are many kinds of grace, and this is the point that I'm wanting to make. There is manifold grace. And the first grace that an individual will encounter is the grace for salvation. This is the forgiveness of sins. This is where God will draw a man or a woman who has been in a life of, of, of debauchery, a life of homosexuality, a life of fornication, a life of addiction, all kinds of wickedness, or whatever that lifestyle is. It doesn't have to be those things. And bring them unto himself, and the grace of God will come upon that individual, forgive them of their sins. He will make them the righteousness of God in himself. And at that moment, in an instant, that individual is born again, born from above, and now considered to be a child of God, but that's not where the grace ends. And this is where we need to understand, because that's just saving grace. That's one of the graces, and it is primary for every believer, because every man and woman walking on planet earth must receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But if I ask for a show of hands, it would probably be 100% that everybody in here knows somebody that has confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but is living a very poor life as a Christian. Living a very below standard life as a believer. Living with all kinds of stuff in their lives. Matter of fact, we're all living with all kinds of stuff. And this is why now, because every day there's something new. There's something that's coming. There's something that's moving. We're walking in the earth. But in the earth, God has not left you without power. And this is why the grace of God and understanding the manifold grace of God is going to be so important to you. Because now, may grace and peace be multiplied to you through what? The knowledge of God. The prophet said, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So it's the knowledge of God that's going to cause grace to be multiplied unto you. Not just saving grace, but the ability and the power of God for you in every day of your life to be able to face whatever's facing you to overcome whatever's attempting to overcome you. And everybody in this room is faced with different obstacles, right? Some of us, some of us have challenges that others would, would never even think about em, embracing, right? Some of us have put ourselves in situations because it's our vocation or our life dream to pursue a particular vocation that we need grace just to overcome a, a, a season that's in our life ahead of us, whether that's in engineering or, or as a doctor or as a lawyer or as any other kind of businessman that you've put yourself in a situation and you realize that you are in that situation because there is a grace upon you to function in a sphere, but now within that sphere, I'm needing a dimension of God 
to unlock mysteries in my life to now succeed in that which I'm walking in. And so this is what I want you to see about the manifold grace of God. This is what I want you to understand, and I'll, I'll go to several passages here. I got a bunch of notes up here, but I won't look at them. <laughs> Praise the Lord, because if I do, I'll, I'll get sidetracked. So, clear example. Saving grace, manifold grace. Saving grace is there's a door. The door that's behind you represents the grace of God for salvation. When you get up and walk out of that door, if you were to get up and walk out of that door into the foyer here of the church, you've just walked through the grace for salvation, but what will you find in the foyer? More doors. More dimensions. More things that are possible. And what happens to so many people, so many believers, is all they ever do is walk through the door and hang out in the lobby. Let's just see the picture. Well, glory to God, I'm saved. You said, yeah, I'm saved. All right, well, let's hang out with all the saved people. And yet, well, what's in that door? I don't know. Well, has anybody ever gone through it? I don't know. Well, will you want to go through it? No, I don't want to go through that door. Why? Because we don't, we don't know what's there. But this is what I want you to understand is there are dimensions in the Spirit of God that are made available to every one of you. God is just waiting for you to begin to walk through the doors, to begin to obtain the grace that is required. This is what coming boldly to the throne of grace is all about. Because when you come to God, you're able to obtain that which is which will enable you to not only walk through a door, but to operate in a dimension of spiritual power and ability to manipulate things beyond. The reason that most people are dependent upon a pulpit for salvation and dependent upon a pulpit to receive the anointing for healing is they never walked out of the foyer. Pastor, I... I'm sick, I need a healing. Well, just go get some grace. Well, well, I, I, thought, I thought you had grace. No, what I'm talking about is as a born-again believer, there is nothing limited to your ability except your lack of pursuit. The Bible says in Psalms, I uh, forget exactly which one it is. Um, here, let me look it up just so you have it. Praise the Lord, I did write it down. Let me give you some scriptures. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to preach out of it, but um, glory to God. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. And uh, let's look at a couple of passages here and then we'll. This is probably the right direction to take so you see it. Don't take my word for it. Take his word for it. Psalms chapter 78, just being verse 38 and following. God, being full of compassion, forgave all of their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yes, many a time did he turn his anger away from them and did not stir up all of his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes away and comes not again. How often did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yes, they turned back and tempted God and did what? Limited the Holy One of Israel. Take the limits off. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that the children of Israel who tempted God in the wilderness, they did not enter into the promise because they did not mix faith with the promise of God. So they came into a place where having received the grace of God to come out of Egypt and into the wilderness, listen to me, the same grace that carried them through the wilderness was the same grace that was going to carry them into the promised land. They just forgot it. 
And so as a believer, they didn't realize that that which God wanted to empower them with was available to them. But instead of staying in faith, they complained, they murmured, they turned back. Now, I only say this again to say that as a believer, we realize that as a as a born again, blood washed believer, God has given us the ability to speak his word. And part of obtaining that grace is to become fully persuaded in that which we have prayed to the point that we no longer say anything opposite. Ephesians chapter 1. A definition of the grace that's available to you is found in verse 3, all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. If you want to define what grace is, it's a spiritual blessing. It's a spiritual blessing. It's not just an empowerment. God, who is the Father of spirits, you are a spirit. He blesses you in your inner being, in your spirit, with the ability to understand and know and to apply his word to your circumstance so that whatever needs to be manipulated by your faith now comes under assault by you. All right. We know in... um, As I look around the room, many of you men, whatever objection has been presented, okay, Um, I'll I'll use my own own house as an example, okay? Well, right now, I have a lower-level storage area that has collected now 22 years of family stuff, (laughs) Right? I mean, screens from the house and windows and old beds and pieces and parts. And and it's been moved in in and out of and cleaned out partially through time, right? I mean, we've gone in, so we'll get rid of this stuff, but then more stuff gathers. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. (laughs) Right? I mean, it's it's the one thing that, that like, in the the future, it's like, I'd like to move. I don't want to move. Why? Because you got to get all the stuff, praise the Lord. And when I say I'd like to move, I mean, I, it doesn't matter. I, 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 we just, we, my wife and I just don't need the house we have. It's way too big for us. And, uh, and so it's like, well, we could, we could downsize, but I don't want to think about having to pack all this junk up, praise the Lord. <laughs> and it's not junk, it's, you know, but anyhow. But, so the point being made is, is that at the point that I make up my mind to attack it is the point that something will happen. Okay? So maybe, maybe it's a project at work. Maybe it's a degree in school. Maybe it's a situation that has been facing you and you realize it's going to require some focused effort for you to overcome that or bring about change to it And nothing will happen until you determine it, until you focus and become intentional about that. There's nothing in your life that's going to just happen until you say, bless God, let's do it, right? Now, the wonderful thing about the grace of God concerning that is, is is that when God's grace kicks in, Not only does he give you a made-up mind, but once you access the manifold grace of God, watch what God will do. Because the grace of God doesn't just empower you in the spirit and give you a place where you are focused to get a job done, but when you really access the grace of God, God sends you help from two arenas. God will send you the help of man and God will send you the help of heaven. That's grace. So when I'm talking about accessing the grace of God, I'm talking about men and women who recognize that these things are available to me. Therefore, I am going to focus my attention on obtaining the grace to accomplish this task and understand that every one of us, the task that's ahead of you today may not be ahead of you tomorrow, especially if you overcome it. 
but you will be faced with something that's going to need the attention of your faith and going to require God's grace in your life. And so I want you to look at the grace of God as something that's much more than just grace for salvation, but I want you to begin to see that God's grace is the enabling power of God that comes upon your life to help you in everyday circumstances, situation, tasks, and abilities. People, this is who God is. It's who he wants to be. It's what he wants to do. God's grace will give you knowledge beyond your years. God's grace will unlock mysteries in your spirit. He will give you keys to things that scientists have not been able to figure out. He'll give you keys to understand things that mathematicians or econo uh, economists haven't been able to decipher. But supernaturally, you're sitting there at your desk and it's the grace of God that comes upon you. Not only will he do that, but he will also cause people to come into your life who, as the Holy Spirit is your helper, they too become your helper. Some of you that are believing God for a new job, all you need to do is as you access the grace of God, realize that God's just about to bring the right person into your life that has the job you've been waiting for, right? You just need to recognize it's accessing, it's building your altar and accessing the grace of God that now the unlimited dimensions of God's kingdom are made available to you so that when answers and solutions come, they're not just some kind of uh, uh, a thrill answer. They are an answer that comes that produces results in your life. As a believer, you need to realize that God is wanting to help you, that God is your helper. This is why John chapter 16, one of the scriptures that I was going to go to before, but Jesus says these words, look, it's expedient that I go away. Because if I don't go away, I cannot send the helper, the paraclete, the Holy Ghost. But if I go away, and when I go away, I'm going to send another who's just like me, but he's not going to be limited. He's going to be unlimited. Why? Because I am the will of God and the faith of God clothed in human flesh. He's going to be the will of God and the faith of God that comes to be clothed in your flesh. He's coming to empower you and bring you to a place where all things become possible. He's coming to lead you and to guide you into all truth to show you things to come. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. The grace of God is made available to bring you to a place where the limitations are removed. This is what God's wanting you to understand. How does it happen? I'm glad you asked. Well, as a believer, one of the things that I've discovered, and, and I want you to understand this, is, is that as we've been discussing building altars to God, as we come into the place of consistently talking to God and accessing the throne of grace. Back to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, come boldly to the throne of grace. Obtain mercy and help grace in your time of need. That when you come before God, when you learn to talk to God and you get God's word in you, that's where you obtain grace. That's where you obtain the power of God. Well, so for me, for you, I want grace. What do you want grace for? Well, I just want to feel good about myself. No. What is the purpose for which you are coming to the throne of God. What is the purpose for which you are presenting your petition in heavenly places? Well, um, I have a loved one that's not walking with God. Oh, okay. So let's get specific grace. Let's begin to get the grace for salvation. Let's begin to move into a place where God is giving me wisdom, keys, and understanding on how to pray in that specific situation. Many of you uh, have heard me give testimony concerning learning to pray and prophesy to the spirit of a man. And what happened was, is I obtained grace to get a friend of mine saved. 
Well, once I obtained that grace, I realized that that grace wasn't specific for an individual. It was specific to a heavenly law. And once I learned the heavenly law, that grace now would work in every situation. Okay? But what happened? Well, if you remember the, the testimony, I had a boss. When I was in Bible college, I worked for a, for a, 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 in a French restaurant, and my boss was ranked number 16 in the world. And if you think Gordon Ramsay's rude, he has nothing on this guy. <laughs> I, I mean it. I mean, he, he, was, he ruled with an iron knife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, he, was, he was very hard and cussed up and down, and boy, nothing was ever right. He was a perfectionist. That's why he was number 16 in the world. He, he, he had a, an ability within him that he protected, and he, and he marshaled that ability. Well, when I worked for this man, I was, I was praying for him one night, and I said, God, I don't know if I can handle this any longer. I'm, I'm, tired, I'm tired of being the, right, the receiver of the, the, the blows and the cuss words and the, and the criticism. I mean, it didn't matter how hard I tried. It didn't matter how good it did. It didn't matter what, what, what it was that, that I was able to produce and put on the table. It just was never, never, never good enough. Well, I don't care who you are. If you're under that long enough, it, it begins to take a toll on you. Nothing you do, nothing you do, nothing you do. So I was, I was complaining one night. Lord, I don't know if I can take this anymore. God said, pray for him. Well, Lord, I don't want to pray for him. He can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm serious. I was offended. I was. I was offended. Like, Lord, I don't, you know. And Lord said, <clears throat> <laughs> how would you like it if the person that prayed for you said that to me? Well, okay, Lord, I don't. Well, Lord, how do you want me to pray? And don't get offended because I said that. But how would, you, how would you like me to pray, Lord? He said, why don't you prophesy to his spirit? I said, what? Prophesy to his spirit. He said, I'm a spirit. You're a spirit. He's a spirit. Why don't you start speaking to his spirit and quit worrying about his soul? Everything that's coming out of him is coming out of a lifestyle and a, and, and a lifetime of hurts in his own life. Every lash, every word, everything that he speaks is coming out of his head and out of his soul because he's wounded in spirit. Why don't you start praying and prophesying to his spirit? Well, Lord, I, I ain't never heard anybody talk like this before. What are you talking about? Prophesy to his spirit. And God took me to Ezekiel chapter 37. And there God says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the Ruach, the breath, or the spirit, and command life. And I said, well, all right, Lord, I guess I can do that. Praise the Lord. And so I said, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I prophesy to the spirit, and I command him to hunger and thirst for righteousness. I declare from his innermost being, he'll begin to desire the things of God over the things of the earth. In the name of Jesus, I speak to his spirit, and I command his spiritual eyes to be opened, his spiritual ears to be opened, that God, when we speak the word, he'll hear it, and your word will change his life. And I began to pray like that. And things got worse. Right? Well, I say that to say the truth. How many know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you started praying for your loved one, and it felt like, well, God, then you're not answering my prayer. It got worse. Man, they went from they went from bad to worse. They went from mean to snakes. They went from, from snakes to vipers. They went from vipers to, you know, I mean, and, and so next thing I know. I'm down there in my pastry kitchen. I was the pastry chef, right? I'm down there in my pastry ki uh, kitchen with this guy cussing me face to face and firing me. Fire! Fire. Right? Fine, Lord. But then he said, but I need you to stay on two more weeks until I can find a replacement. Can, seriously, can, can you do that? Sure, right? And so that weekend, that Saturday night, right? Well, that Sunday morning after that Saturday night that I got fired, I went to church. 
and, uh, and I was at church and just enjoying the presence of God. And, uh, and, and that was where um, I, was, I was in the church service and this woman came in that was completely blind. Walked in with her seeing eye dog, her stick and everything and, 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 and come walking in and, uh, and get to the end of the service and comes, she comes down to the front to the altar and just long story short, prayed for her and God gave her two brand new eyes. She, be, she took off running one way, I took off running the other way. That was, a, that was the first time I'd ever seen blind eyes open in front of my eyes. Literally, she came in, had been blind since she was eight years old. She was 38, so she had been completely blind for over 30 years, living completely disabled with a stick and a dog, you know, and, and living life. And standing right there in the altar, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said the blind will see. I command her eyes to be open now in Jesus' name. And her eyes popped open, and, and, and uh, I, I had my college class ring on, uh, which was an amethyst, and it's got a little uh, gold cross in it. And all of a sudden, her eyes open up. And she goes, my God, what a beautiful ring. And then she said, I can see. She took off running one way, and I went, woo, and took off running the other. <laughs> now, surprise, but what happened was that miracle hit the paper. Blind woman sees in local church. Blind eyes open. Testimony. Jesus heals the blind. Right? Makes, makes a, a front page. Of, not the one the front page. It, it was, there was a mention of it in the front page. And then a, it was an article in the religious section that came out. And so, so I'm, at, I'm at work that next week. And one of the waiters comes down and says, man, did you hear about this? I said, yeah, I'm the one that prayed for it. <laughs> what? So he goes up and tells the chef. Chef, you got to hear this, man. The, the guy downstairs, he's the one that got that woman's blind eyes open. The chef comes down there and sits, sits down there and says, and didn't say, well, tell me about it. I just want to know all about Jesus. No. Comes down there and said, I've already fired you. All I'm telling you now is I don't want to hear you say anything about God in my restaurant. Huh. Well, praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy to his spirit a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, a desire for the things of God, All right? So I worked, I worked the rest of that night, the rest of that week. Well, the next night, one of the waiters comes down, and, 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 uh, and, and he, during, during the dessert courses at the, at the restaurant, and I'm making all the desserts, and he comes down, and he begins to talk to me. Well, now this, this waiter's hungry for the things of God. Well, I lead him to the Lord. He gets born again, All right? Man, and, and now he's so overwhelming, he goes up and tells the, the chef again. <laughs> and uh, so next thing I know, the chef's down there in my face. <clears throat> you blankety blank, I told you never to say another word. But, you know, I've already, I've got somebody else I'm looking at, and, and, uh, and I may not even keep you around next week. I'll just do the desserts myself, right? And, uh, but that night, he said, he, he said, he said, I don't believe in God. I said, why not? He said, I got a sister in France that got cancer and died. And if God was real, he wouldn't have given her cancer. There can't be a God. I said, God didn't give her cancer. What do you mean God didn't give her cancer? I said, God is not the author of sickness and disease. God is the healer. That's the grace of God that's available. God's the one who heals, not the one who makes sick. Well, we're Catholic. Oh, well, praise God. I'm happy you're Catholic. What does that mean? Well, he said, he said, well, at least I know she's in heaven. I said, was she born again? He said, no, what's born again? She's Catholic. I said, she's in hell. I did, I told him. I said, if she wasn't born again, she's not in heaven. In order to see and enter the kingdom of God, a man must be born again, born from above. There, there is no... There is no left or right. This is the only way. His name is Jesus. Religion doesn't save a man. Believing in God doesn't get a man access to glory. Believing God does. You have to believe God for salvation. Your religion will not save you. I don't believe it. He got mad at me. He believed it. Tell me my sister's in hell. I said, Pastor, I mean, Your sister's not in heaven if she wasn't born again. 
Now, we, we can hope that she actually received Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior. And there are many Catholics that have come to faith in Christ, but all Catholics, just by the fact that they're Catholic, are not born again. Just like all people who believe themselves to be right with God aren't right with God because they've never been born again. I didn't write the book. I didn't make up the rules. And it's really not a rule. It's the grace of God that's made available to all men. His grace has appeared. So Patrick, he, he gets mad at me, cusses me out, tells me, tomorrow night's your last night. So now I'm really fired. I'm not working the next week. Well, that night, he goes home. He can't sleep all night. He's troubled in his spirit. Can't believe that man would say my sister's. But it bothered me. Well, wait a minute. If my sister didn't make it, then that means I'm not going to make it. Well, I started thinking about it. If just because I'm a Catholic, he, because, and so the next night he comes down and he says, listen, he said, I, I, I need you to help me understand something. He said, in France, we were raised that if you were born and became a part of the Catholic Church, that you were automatically saved. That if you were confirmed as a child, that, you're, that you, just a, by mere fact that you're a member of the Catholic Church, that, that you would go to heaven when you die. I said, Patrick, that is not the case. That is not the case. And he said, well, 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 what has to happen? I said, it's really simple. It's not that difficult, but everybody has to receive Christ for themselves. Everybody has to believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and make him the Lord of their life. And that's where salvation occurs. That's where saving grace comes. He said, huh. He goes upstairs, cooks, comes back down, but his demeanor is a little bit different. That night, comes down and I'm finishing the final course, my last night at work, making the desserts, making them up. And uh, I'm, I'm, cleaning, I'm cleaning up the pastry kitchen. He's been upstairs. He's cleaned up his, his upstairs kitchen. And he, and he comes down and he, and he says, I, I want to talk to you. I said, okay, what are you talking about? He said, uh, I, I, I think I need to get born again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, so I prayed for him. Well, he got born again. I mean, got, got, got born again. Power of God, tears streaming down his face, the glory of God all over him. He, 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 he wipes the tears off his face because he's a man, right? And, uh, and, and turns his head away from me and, 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 and says, thank you. But he's got his head down and he takes off. He runs up the stairs. I, fin I didn't see him again. He goes upstairs. He leaves. He leaves the restaurant. I finish cleaning up. I go home. I go home to my house and thinking, well, praise God, Lord, that worked. Papa signs the spirit stuff works, right? Get, I get home, and so now um, it's about 1 o'clock in the morning by the time I finished all the dessert course and cleaning up and getting home and getting, getting everything home. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning, and I get home, and next thing I know. And so I'm thinking, who is this at 1 o'clock in the morning? Go to the door, open the door, and there he is with his wife and his three children. They need to get born again. Right? Now, and so, so I invite them in, of course, and spend the next two hours sharing the gospel with him, and, and uh, they all get saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost, and today, they're all living. He's had three more children, and they're living as a testimony of Jesus Christ running, running uh, a restaurant in, in Kansas, I'll go ahead and say it, praise God, it's on live TV, in Kansas City called La Provence. He's hoping they got six restaurants now, I think, no, maybe four restaurants and the French market. La Provence has been the number, in the top 10 restaurants in the United States over the last 15 years. It continues to stay within the top 10. It just, right, at, right in that arena. One of the best restaurants you could ever go to, not to mention the other restaurants that they run. God has blessed him. But the point is that the grace of God that was obtained, and this is my point, I did not get that wisdom on my own. I got that wisdom from God. That is obtaining grace. When you obtain grace, you'll, you'll obtain wisdom. You'll obtain understanding. You will obtain help in your 
time of need. God will give you that which is necessary to open up doors of opportunity and utterance for you. God will give you words to speak. That's why the Bible tells you, don't take thought for what you're going to say, for God himself will give you the words to speak. But what I'm trying to bring to you is, is that there is an unlimited pool of the ability and power of God that's available to us. We just don't access it. And not only will God's grace, right, give you wisdom and understanding, but God's grace will also access help. The Holy Spirit comes as your helper. One of the places that he's going to help you the most is in your inner man, right? So not only do you get wisdom and understanding, but he strengthens you by the power of God's Spirit in your inner man. What does that mean? That means that he will bring you to a place for that which you have believed God for, nothing can take it from you. I remember the day I was praying for that young man. I was right over there. From that day forward, I haven't had to pray like that again. I got my answer. I obtained the grace necessary, right? Now, will I remind God, God, I remind you. I got a covenant with you. I'm in, I'm in the throne right now. You've already told me what you're going to do, and I'm not letting go till I see it, right? But I didn't have to pray through to get that grace. I obtained it. Are you following what I'm talking about, about the graces that are available to you? And so one of the things that I want to encourage everybody in here in is, is that you can obtain power in your life for that which is facing you. The final thing that the grace of God will provide for you, and, and I've already said it, is help in two dimensions. I've already said it, but let me lay this out. God's grace will connect you. It opens doors. When you walk through one, there are many. When you come into the dimension of recognizing that God's grace God's grace will connect you with people that are carrying part of your destiny. And until you obtain that grace, that part of your destiny may not unfold. The will of God is secure. God's will doesn't change. He is absolute in what his design is. His destiny that he has chosen for you. Now, I'm not here to say that, well, if you've missed it, you can't obtain it. God has many facets, but what I'm here to say is, is that as a believer, it's the grace of God that will connect you not only to the helper who is the Holy Spirit, but God will also connect you to helpers that will be individuals that God will use to open and grant access to arenas and dimensions in your life. And just because access has been granted doesn't mean that you're under. It just means you have access. Some of you have gained access by the grace of God into arenas and surpassed the individuals who opened the door for you. Why? Because that's the grace of God that's on your life. It's also because God's for you and not against you. It's, and, and so don't. Don't feel bad when you access grace and God begins to elevate you because when you learn the mystery of the altar and obtaining the grace of God, then you're going to find that there is nothing that God will withhold from you. The final thing that the grace of God, and I'm closing on this, that will provide for you is not only natural help, but supernatural help. Psalms chapter 20 says, I will send you help, grace from the sanctuary. And so one of the things that I want you to consider and recognize when you think about the grace of God, think about it as help, 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 help. Not help, I'm drowning. Help, I'm overcoming. Help me gather in the spoils. Help me overtake this land. Help me move into a place to possess the houses and the lands that you've provided for me. Come on. Some of you need help 
to obtain the possessions that God has ordained for you. And you'll never obtain them until the help arrives. Come on. Right? One of the things that I learned years ago when God began to speak to me about synchronization, and this is, and I, this is my close, praise the Lord. Step back. But I learned this, that many times that new season that new dimension that is made available to you by the grace and the power of God comes upon your life by the introduction of a new person. God sends you help, right? Some of you in this room began to grow supernaturally in faith when you were introduced to Lazy Fishers. That's not to boast to me. That's to boast in God. That's to give God the glory. That doesn't have anything to do with me as an individual except for that that which is on me can now come upon you. That which God has given to me, I can make it available to you. According to Romans chapter 1, Paul says in Romans, that I might impart some spiritual grace or gift unto you. This is why I've come. And I say that only to say that, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to access the manifold grace of God here at Legacy Faith Church, Get ready, because the limits are coming off. And it doesn't matter what the world's economy does. It doesn't matter what the world's systems are doing. It doesn't matter what others are experiencing. The fact is, is that you have access to the unlimited ability and grace of God and God's grace is not subjected to the world, but as I said in opening, the grace of God brings the world into subjection to you. The elements that exist out there now become, begin to come under the power of your hand to manipulate them through faith to bring about the results that God has chosen for you. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Thank you for viewing our online experience. I pray today's teaching has helped you draw closer to Jesus or inspired you with wisdom and revelation from the Word of God. If you're a new believer or would like to know more about what it is to follow Jesus, please reach out to us on the website or follow us here on social media. Also, if you'd like to contribute to making a difference to lives around the world, please select the giving button on our website. We would love to stay connected with you. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Here at Legacy Faith Church, we decree this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith.